Value Theorem for Derivatives, which states that if f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there exists at least one c between a and b such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which f prime of c we know is the slope of the tangent line to the graph at c, and f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the slope of the secant line, uh, the line that joins points a, f of a, and b, f of b. Now, in physical terms, what that really means to us is there's a point where in the interior of the interval, if we were thinking in terms of motion, uh, where the instantaneous velocity is also equal to the average velocity. Now, from our previous studies, we have looked at a special case of the mean value theorem known as Rolle's theorem. And Rolle's theorem, our primary concern with it was simply to establish it so we could use its results in order to prove the mean value theorem. So let's take a quick look at what we did with Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem had the added condition that f of a and f of b had to be the same. So the y values had to be the same. Well, we can notice that if we take Rolle's theorem and we just rotate the plane uh, in this direction, that we actually get a thing that looks exactly like, we get a graph that looks exactly like the mean value theorem. So it certainly would be plausible and intuitive that the mean value theorem should work. That's nice, but in mathematics, we know how do we demonstrate that mathematically? Well, what we want to do is we want to show that if we can create a situation such that Rolle's theorem's conditions uh, are satisfied, then we can use the results of Rolle's theorem to get the C in the interval between A and B that we're looking for. Now, certainly, if I look at the picture, I can't use f of a and f of b because they're not the same. So what I need to do is look at, is there a function that I could use that would incorporate f and allow me to satisfy Rolle's, Rolle's theorem as well? Well, you'll notice that if we were to take the difference between the two functions, one I'll call g, g of x, we'll just let that be our line, our secant line. If I take the difference between f and g, and let's just say that we call it h, they do agree and have the same y values at a and b. So maybe we could establish the conditions necessary to apply the Rolle's theorem to that new h function. So we're going to need the equation of the secant line, or the equation of the line that contains that chord that jo uh, joins those two points. Now, we know that y minus y1 equals x minus x1. So in other words, in order to generate the equation of a line, we need to know a point on the line and the slope. Well, I can use the point A, F of A as my point, or B, F of B, and we know that the slope is F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So if I'm going to call my Y, in this case, G of X, my Y1, F of A, my slope, F of B minus F of A over B minus A, and that would be x minus a. Now, in a better form, because we're ultimately going to want to do some substitution, g of x is actually equal to f of a plus f of b minus f of a all over b minus a times the quantity x minus a. That's the general equation for that secant so let's go and look and see if we can make the conditions for Rolle's theorem be satisfied relative to that h function. So we'll, we'll come over here and we'll look at the proof of the mean value theorem. 
We're going to start by letting h of x equal f of x minus g of x. Okay? That gets our f function into a relationship, and we know uh, conditions for Rolle's theorem can actually be satisfied by doing that. Now, the form we're really going to want is we'll bring the other form of g of x, our secant line equation, and we will put it in here in place of g. Okay? That does two things for us. One is we no longer have the g function in there. We have only our f function. And we also have the slope relationship that we're ultimately looking for in the equation, or in the results of the mean value theorem. Now, we can note that h of a is equal to h of b, which in this case would actually equal zero. We can kind of see that in our picture, but we could also verify that simply by evaluating h of a by putting a in to the h equation, or the h function, and simplifying we would get zero. Likewise, we could do the same thing with b. Now, that's a necessary condition for Rolle's theorem. The other necessary conditions are what? We need continuity, and we also need differentiability. Well, since h is the difference of two continuous functions, we know that h has to be continuous also. And since h is the difference of two differential functions, then we know that h is also differentiable. So we can actually calculate and take h prime. h prime would be f prime of x minus, if I take the derivative in here, the only variable, the only part of that expression that contains an x is right here. The derivative of x is 1, so the derivative of this piece is 1. f of a is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. This would become f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And so there is my h prime function. Now, since Rolle's conditions have been satisfied by Rolle's theorem, we know what? We know Rolle's theorem states simply that there is some value c in the interval between a and b such that h prime of c is zero. That's the c that we're actually looking for. So you'll note if we take this equation for h prime and we say h prime of c, that's going to be equal to f prime of c minus f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, that has to equal zero because we just established that h prime of c is equal to zero. Well, right here we have the relationship that we're looking for. So simply, if I was to move this to the other side by adding the opposite of that to both sides, we get the desired relationship. f prime of c is actually equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And there is the results that we're looking for relative to the mean value theorem. Now, the mean value theorem is an existence theorem. Existence theorems, by and large, are pretty difficult to prove. But we were able to take advantage of Rolle's theorem in order to pretty easily establish this relationship. Now, mathematically, one might note that the, that the mean value theorem is going to become extremely important for us. Uh, it also helps verify uh, information in, in future sections, such as the first derivative test. Uh, also becomes absolutely critical to proving the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so the main concern we have is that you get exposure to the proof of the mean value theorem and you remember it. And the best way to remember it maybe is to recognize that mean means average. And you might think of it 